Hello everyone, Marcus Stahl here, in front of the webcam again. So, uh, yeah guys, it's been a little while before I've gotten in front of the camera for you guys, uh, unless you count that drawing video a little while ago. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over some things that I'm going to be changing up in terms of my hardware setup that I thought you guys might be interested in, since, uh, like, I think a lot of you might have an interest in having, a uh, higher-end processors, gaming, and other things like that. If you don't, uh, you can go ahead and skip the video, but, uh, if you'd like, I'm going to stay here and uh, go over some of the parts I got and uh, give you guys some insight into what I was thinking and how they're going to impact my workflow so you guys can know more or less uh, how you might want to make those decisions yourself. I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, I'm still a little bit sick. I've got a bit of a cough, so if my voice sounds a little off or if I cough from time to time, I hope you guys don't mind. I'm also not really planning on doing all that much editing here, so I'm not going to be doing any uh, cuts or anything. But on occasion, if you just see me do a clap or something like that, that's usually something I do whenever I'm going to mark a cut or a frame I didn't like. So if I accidentally do that just on NSYNC, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I apologize for it in advance since I don't really want to do too much editing for this. Even though, ironically, this video is probably going to be the first thing I edit upon uh, building this final rig. So, uh, yeah, let's get started by uh, just naming all the things we have over here. Uh, first things first, uh, let's just go over this central processor or the CPU. I've got the i7-5820K processor from Intel in the uh, X99 socket line. Uh, for RAM, I've got uh, two DIMMs or two uh, units of a DDR4 2400MHz RAM from Corsair. Uh, I've also got this little thing, not too important, it's just a uh, PS2 cable to USB converter because uh, my current keyboard doesn't have a USB. Uh, over here we've got some arctic uh, cleaning kit, an arctic cleaning kit, as well as uh, two tubes of thermal paste, one from Cooler Master from my old uh, heat sink, and one from uh, Arctic Silver, the Arctic Silver 5, a very popular choice. Uh, I've got some coffee filters here, in case you're wondering, those are actually for uh, cleaning up uh, for the uh, Arctic Silver kit, since you really shouldn't be using any linked cloth, so I just use coffee filters since they're pretty excellent for that. Uh, on the note of cooling, we've got over here uh, the Noctua NH-U12S cooler. It's a pretty well-known brand on Noctua. I kind of have a bit of a reputation for a fugly uh, uh, cooler design, or at least their fans' color decisions. Seriously, that brown and teal, wow. But uh, yeah, that's just a pretty good cooler just due to some silence things that you might note up in the future. Uh, over here we've got an actual another opened box, uh, the PCE AC68 dual band wireless AC1900 PCIe adapter from ASUS. Wow, that is a mouthful. Uh, yeah, this is a PCIe adapter. You put it into a PCI Express port on your motherboard, and uh, that enables your motherboard or your computer as a whole to have a Wi-Fi if it didn't previously. Something you might want to get if you're a desktop user and might need uh, Wi-Fi in the immediate future. Uh, there are some various reasons for that. I'll get into them in the video. Another opened package here, the uh, Asus Turbo or GTX 970. 4GB uh, of VRAM or 4GB, it's more like 3.5 due to the 970. But uh, yeah, I've gotten this one a few months back and I figured I'd just go over it a little bit since I didn't make a video on it back then. And uh, lastly, here we have the X99 Sabertooth motherboard from ASUS. Yeah, this is uh, what the main uh, connector for all the pieces in the computer. It's my latest motherboard. Pretty expensive, but a pretty solid choice, and I'll go into that later. But uh, yeah, that just about does it for most of the new pieces. Uh, I did make some changes to my uh, case, the NZXT Phantom. It's currently not on shots right now, so yeah, I can't show it you immediately. Although I'll make sure to have at least one shot of it once everything is done, especially since I still need to clean it out. But I made a small change to it. If you know the Phantom line, you might be familiar with their various color schemes. I initially chose the white and black model, but I kind of want a little bit of red in there. So I elected to paint all the black parts uh, red to kind of give it a bit of a white and red theme. Sort of like what you can see with Asana and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'll go into that a little later. There's still some black left over here and there, and it didn't turn out perfect, but... Uh, I kind of like the looks, and I think you guys might appreciate it too. Let's just get started with the first piece of the system that I mentioned, the uh, Intel Core i7 processor. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with the CPU lines, there are two general brands you can choose from nowadays, AMD and Intel. And uh, generally, a lot of people tend to say Intel is the better brand. There are a lot of reasons why you might want to go AMD or Intel. 
but primarily if you're a gamer or if you're doing anything that might be dependent on single threaded tasks, which unfortunately due to the way programming just works nowadays, generally tends to be most things, you're probably going to want an Intel processor just due to the improvements in their IPC, which may or may not change next year with uh, AMD's upcoming Zen line of processors. But for now, let's just say that I'm switching over to Intel since my tasks are becoming increasingly more IPC dependent as is compared to uh, multi-thread dependent such things such as rendering and other things like that. My current processor is actually an AMD FX6300, but uh, yeah, the AMD FX8320, if you remember from last year, there was unfortunately a mishap with the AMD FX8320, whereby it kind of fused to the heatsink that I initially used on it. It was having poor heat performance initially, and then once I removed it, uh, it just would not remove itself from the heatsink, and uh, when I removed the processor, or the heatsink, the processor came with it, and uh, yeah, that processor's dead. I actually still have it lying around somewhere. I could probably show it to you guys in a picture or something, but uh, yeah, that is one dead processor, so since I couldn't be left with nothing, I elected to go with the AMD FX6300 as a stopgap until I could upgrade later on. But uh, yeah, that was a bit of a sad story, and uh, I actually still have a bit of dental floss over here. One part for my own dental hygiene, but also just because uh, you never know when you might have to defuse a processor and dental floss works surprisingly well for that. So uh, yeah, the, I chose the. Uh, let's just go into the in, the reason why I chose this specific processor in the Intel line over the others. Uh, if you're familiar, there are two general divisions in the Intel socket lines right now. There's their consumer end models with the Z170 platform, which just recently came out and their extreme or enthusiast platform, which consists of the X99 platform. Uh, I elected to go with the X99 platform, mainly because of the things I do. I generally tend to do more work or content creation oriented things, such as 3D modeling, sculpting, uh, uh, photo editing, video editing, video rendering, and game development nowadays. And each one of those tasks needs a lot of CPU processing power. And I just wanna make sure that I have the absolute best so I don't end up having that little nagging thought in the back of my head what about if you just went for a slightly better processor, if you did this or that? And uh, I'm not going to say that the Skylake line isn't good or it's not great, really. But the thing is, uh, the thing that concerns me with uh, Skylake is I don't really see much of an upgrade path in the future. Intel kind of did a bit of a weird thing this year where they did both a tick and a talk in their uh, processing lines by releasing Broadwell a little earlier and Skylake now which kind of leaves me wondering what is the future for the Z170 platform, especially since Intel's kind of had a bad tendency to switch up their socket lines basically almost every few or every other generation now, which is concerning, which means uh, if I did get a Skylake processor, it could be possible that I would just be locked into a quad-core processor with hyper-threading as my only upgrade path. And I just decided that I wanted to have a bit of a better upgrade path since uh, with the Intel Core i7-5820K, it's a six core processor with hyper threading, but if I want a bit more power, I could potentially upgrade to something like the 5960X or the 6960X or whatever that is in the future, or even a Xeon in the future if I needed a server and I have another PC to go around. I could just switch in and put a 24 core server or something if I actually have the money for that mercy. And uh, yeah, that would have been a possible upgrade to not waste the entire motherboard or system. In addition, uh, the uh, Core i7-5820K is also an unlocked processor, which means I can overclock it for slightly more performance as I'm feeling that I'm not getting just enough of it uh, with my current setup. To go along with that mother, uh, with this CPU, I also uh, got this, the uh, Noctua NHU-12S uh, heatsink and cooler. It's a pretty popular brand there, Noctua. A lot of people like the NHD-15 and the NHD-14. I had to go with the NHU-12S due to the fact that uh, my CPU is actually, uh, or my uh, case is actually too small to hold any hot, any larger coolers. I'm not too really uh, bummed out by that. I mean, I wish I could have gotten a slightly bigger cooler, but I kind of love my case. It just looks so appealing to me, and I just don't want to switch it out just because I want a new cooler. So. Uh, yeah, I decided to just uh, get a slightly smaller cooler, and especially since I'm not planning to do any crazy overclocks, if I was going to do that, I would have gotten a water cooler instead of an air cooler. So uh, I should be just fine with just this, if I'm just going to maybe go for like a 4 gigahertz, 4.2, or God forbid I got a, a golden ship or something out of 4.5 gigahertz on a 5820K. But uh, yeah, that'd just be uh, a cooler that can hopefully suffice, because I'm sick and tired of having to deal with cooling. 
Day one, guys, uh, don't skimp on your cooling. Uh, I had to pay a serious price for all that uh, skimping I did early on. Yeah, right now, uh, in terms of the cooler I have currently, I have the Cooler Master uh, Hyper uh, two uh, T3 Evo. It's not really all that good. It's a cheap $15 uh, heat sink. It works well enough for what it needs to be, but uh, it isn't really cooling my processor all that well. So I'm going with this uh, pretty decent air cooler, and it's also pretty silent based on what I've heard. So hopefully that should reduce some of the fan noise that you might be hearing in the background of my voice in the videos. There's probably going to be some fan noise right now from my Surface Pro since that's what I'm recording from. But uh, yeah, let's just hope that improves slightly. Uh, next big part over here is the X99 Sabertooth motherboard. Uh, there are a lot of different motherboard options in the, uh, Sa in the X99 platform. And uh, the main reason I went for this is for uh, durability and the cool factor, I'm going to be honest. Uh, this thing is honestly built like a tank. It has thermal armor all over it. It's one of the few motherboards I even know of that has a uh, backplate, of all things. And it's a pretty sturdy motherboard, and it has a five-year warranty, which would give me plenty of time just in case of any damage of any sort occurs to it. So I could uh, upgrade it or potentially just have it swapped out and uh, get a new motherboard that can uh, help last me the, t the time. But uh, yeah, the X99 motherboard also has some other benefits. I mean, it's just not just that. Uh, it also has uh, plenty of uh, USB ports, uh, all the features set up. It's a pretty good brand, Asus. I tend to trust their products. And in, uh, in addition, it just looks like a sturdy product. And I wanted to get something that I felt would last me and made me feel good about having a decent processor or decent system in there without having to worry, uh, am I going to have this expandability? Am I going to have this or that? Uh, this thing has basically everything you could possibly ask for out of a motherboard. And it has some pretty great performance for the, for the price range that you get. And um, as a last little extra here, uh, there's the, the alternative would have been the uh, X99 Deluxe or the Pro model. While the X99 Deluxe is pretty popular, I like to go with this since uh, I have some ideas for how I could possibly customize this without voiding my warranty that would help make my motherboard look all that much better inside of my case as it is, so just a means of improving the aesthetics overall of my system. But uh, for now, let's just say that it's a pretty good motherboard, a pretty solid deal, a, pr a pretty great uh, system, and it's pretty durable, so hopefully this will last me a nice long time so I won't have to keep upgrading every few months. and. Uh, yeah, also, let's just hope it lets me upgrade pretty often. On the note of upgrades, uh, right here I've got some brand new RAM, uh, DDR4, the latest stuff. Uh, as you guys might have known, the previous platform not too long ago was mainly X, uh, uh, DDR3, that was the main thing. It's been here for a while now, but we're kind of making the switch over to DDR4. Prices are really dropping on this stuff. I mean, I got these two DIMMs for like 90 bucks, and they're 2400 uh, megahertz, so that's a pretty impressive deal compar in comparison. Uh, it was like 75 bucks for my eight gigabytes of DDR4 uh, back in uh, 2014, I guess. So yeah, pretty good amount of RAM. I got 16 gigs instead of eight gigs just so I could have a dual channel instead of just having a single eight gig DIMM. I was also considering getting a single 16 gigabyte DIMM, but at the same time, I looked over at my X99's uh, compatibility things and it doesn't really seem to support 128 gigs of, of uh, RAM. And honestly, I'm not too sure if I really pro enough to need 128 gigs of RAM. I think I'll be good with 16 gigs and maybe 32 gigs for a later upgrade. So uh, yeah, not much all else to say here. RAM isn't really all that important nowadays. I mean, there are some things that can benefit from RAM like iGPUs, but uh, I've kind of got a GPU right over here. On that note, as you can see, uh, the GPU's actually already been opened. The box has been, I have actually had this GPU for a few months now. Uh, Initially, I was uh, getting it just for a replacement because I was hoping to sell my uh, GTX 770 to a friend, but uh, they kind of did a bite on it, and they ended up uh, rescinding at the last second, but I already had the GPU, and it's like, uh, I don't want to send it back. It looks too cool. So, yeah, I've got a GTX 970 over here. It has 4 gigabytes of VRAM and, uh, well, 4 gigabytes. It's actually 3.5 gigabytes, if you remember that controversy from earlier, but... Uh, yeah, I just love the looks of this thing, and it's a GTX 970. For those of you that don't know, uh, Oculus recommends that you have at least a GTX 970 as the minimum requirements for virtual reality. So uh, to me, having a GTX 970 in my own rig kind of feels like a way to guarantee that whatever software I make should be capable of running up to the specs, because if it doesn't run on my rig, it's probably not going to run on somebody else's rig, if you're going to be running Oculus at uh, the recommended specs. So... Yeah, I, I guess the 970 kind of serves as a purpose there, since my old 770 was a little bit below par virtual reality. 
especially since I need to run everything at like 90 hertz nowadays and I have a 144 hertz monitor so yeah having that performance should uh, help me out not too sure if I'm gonna upgrade this anytime soon I'm probably gonna stick around with it until uh, the next generation of oculus or virtual reality headsets come out at 4k or something like that then I'll probably upgrade but uh for now, I'm going to stick with my 970, especially since that white and red, I love it. And uh, yeah, last two things to note here, uh, also got uh, this uh, PCIe thing. Uh, it's a wireless card, it's something that you plug into your PCI Express lanes on your motherboard. And uh, I had to get this kind of as a bit of an emergency thing. Uh, a week or two ago, uh, for some reason, I have absolutely no idea why, uh, the Ethernet on my computer and or my router or modem just died on me. I honestly have no idea what the issue is. It could be hardware, but I've already tried out every other cable I could, and uh, the cables are doing fine. Uh, the modem itself has internet. I mean, I had to get Wi-Fi wi still certainly works. My Surface Pro is fine. My phone's fine. Everything that uses Wi-Fi in the house is just fine. Uh, even when I switched over to this uh, PCIe card, uh, it worked just fine just having Wi-Fi. So I figure it might not be a problem with the modem. So the only thing I can think of at this point is uh, the uh, motherboard might be done done on my end. It's not too sure why. It's not all that old. But uh, yeah, it's just a kind of a weird purchase I had to make. Uh, I bought something pretty good. It's a hundred. It was a hundred bucks. Uh, it's the uh, PCE AC68 from Asus. Again, I'm a bit of a whore for Asus products at this point, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty good pro. It's a pretty good Wi-Fi card. I honestly could not tell the difference between the Wi-Fi and the uh, wired connection. This thing was so good, and uh, yeah, it was more than enough for my needs. And hey, if I'm gonna have a new motherboard that doesn't have Wi-Fi on its own, I might as well just plop this in and give it Wi-Fi. More options, right? And uh, yeah, the last thing to really note of here is uh, this power supply I got, the uh, Corsair RM850 watt power supply. Uh, I originally had an EVGA power supply, it was 500 watts or so. It's a pretty good power supply, and honestly it's enough for the actual watt usage that my computer uses. But uh, I just wanted to get something that was a little bit more secure, since I don't really feel all that comfortable running uh, my processor so close to the limit. I mean. Honestly, I probably should have been uh, more careful from the beginning. I mean, my initial PC had like a watt need need of around like uh, 450 or 470, almost not, almost the exact 500 watts, and that EVGA power supply still held up. And I am amazed that it managed to hold up despite that workload, through all the little damage that's occurred, the switching of CPUs, processors, and all that. Uh, but yeah, it held out. So I guess I uh, this purchase was probably the most unnecessary of all of them. But I just wanted to get something that could keep up with all of my needs and could possibly give me expandability in the future. And that would help my cable management a bit since my uh, previous power supply was uh, not modular at all. So it had all the cables. I just have to find some place to just shove them in. But uh, this thing's fully modular and it's really quiet. So hopefully that should help uh, with the whole noise from the fans from my computers uh, going forward. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent power supply. Gold rated. Uh, hopefully it'll do for the needs I have right now. So, uh, yeah, guys, this is going to be the rig going forward. Uh, I'll show you guys what the computer looks like when it's all done. Uh, but, yeah, guys, uh, thank you very much for all your support. I mean, a lot of this stuff uh, I wouldn't have actually been able to afford for a while there if it hadn't been full of support from you guys, from getting my day job, uh, a lot of the choices I made. It's been a rough road for, since the creation of my first PC, but uh, I've gotten some pretty good experience in PC building now. I've had to open up my case countless numbers of times. I held a... A friend, my cousin, well, several friends helped build their own PCs, and uh, I'm relatively confident this shouldn't take too long, and we'll hopefully be seeing the fruits of this uh, upgrade pretty soon. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Marcus Dahl, logging out.